Welcome to the topic where we highlight Houston Community College, our students, our programs, and our reach into the community. I'm Todd Duplantis. We're joined by a few special guests today on this special edition of the show. In fact, it was one of our students who prompted this episode by inviting and submitting questions to the office of Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. She joins us today, along with HCC student and president of the HCC Computer Science Club, Al Tareen, along with Samir Saber, who is the HCC faculty advisor and division chair of the computer networking. Welcome to you all. Judge Hidalgo, thank you so much for taking some time out of your schedule and joining us today. Thank you so much. And, and Al, Samir, thank you so much for, for including me. Absolutely. Al, could you share a little background on the judge? Yes, I'll be more than happy to. Firstly, Judge Hidalgo, thank you so much for accepting to do this. So for the people who may not know, Judge Lena Hidalgo was raised in an immigrant family. She knows firsthand the sacrifices hardworking Texans make every day to build a better life for their families. Judge Hidalgo was born in Colombia during the drug war. She grew up in Peru and Mexico before job opportunities brought her parents to the United States in 2005. Her parents had two goals, to keep the, their children safe and to help them have a good education. She is a proud product of our public schools and graduated from Stanford University with a degree in political science the same year she became a US citizen. While pursuing a joint degree in law and public policy at New York University and Harvard, Judge Hidalgo researched criminal justice policies and coordinated with advocacy groups and governments to push for reform. Since arriving in Texas, Judge Hidalgo has been committed to giving back. She has dedicated hundreds of hours to our country's most vulnerable communities, working at the Tex Texas Civil Rights Project to, ser to serving as a Spanish English medical interpreter at the Texas Medical Center and supporting immigrants in search for lost loved ones. Judge Hidalgo was elected on November the 6th, 2018, and sworn in as Harris County Judge on January 1st, 2019. Judge Hidalgo, it's an honor to, to have you here, and thank you so much once again. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Al. Uh, Judge, uh, these questions have been submitted by Al and, and some students. Um, the first question I have for you, these are very uncertain times for many of us. Many of our students have uh, maybe lost their job, lost employment, facing uh, financial hardships. What advice do you give to our students during these uncertain times we live in? Yeah, no, it's, it's such a difficult time for everyone. It's very much the challenge of a generation. In many ways, this is our Great Depression our World War II, and the young people are, you know, the ones that were fluent already on Zoom. And, um, you know, we've got a, a generation of folks who grew up using the internet and, um, you know, cell phones and all of that, and who are going to be the key innovators to get us out of this and to learn from this. You know, that's how the internet was developed. Uh, modern medicine, so many of our advances came through hard times. And we do our best work when we're against the wall. So I can't promise that things are going to be better overnight. I understand the profound challenges folks are facing. So I'll just say first, we're working to do all we can to mitigate the situation. You know, the county's invested $10 million for small businesses. We're putting $15 million toward financial assistance for the most vulnerable families that they can spend and um, whatever they most need. We are working on child care for folks who need it and are essential workers. Um, we've worked on, on how to support those who are homeless. And we're trying just to, to touch everybody, the most vulnerable in the community. And I want the economy to reopen as much as everyone. We just need to make sure that the reopening is sustainable. So that's part of what we're doing is fighting to make that happen. But look, as we all, uh, you know, get through this, I think it's important and certainly what keeps me going too is, is we are all in this together, but we also, each of us has the power to, uh, to help contain this virus. We, it, it, it cannot be contained 
without every single one of us or the vast majority of us. And so that's something that uh, that I think folks, we can all find solace in is, is, you know, it's a different kind of life. We're all adjusting. Uh, it's very difficult. But it, it, if, if it's something students know how to do is to juggle many things, particularly HCC students, and, and, and just to keep going as to when times are tough and know that we're doing everything we can to make them less tough. Judge, you know, one thing I was talking to the, the team here about before you got on is I, I don't envy the decisions you guys are having to make right now. You and the, uh, and the, the mayor, you know, Ju Mayor Turner, you're having to make some extremely difficult decisions at this time. Um, how do you get through those? And when you go home at night, it, what, it has to be taken on the world on your shoulders on this because you're making some extremely difficult measure decisions right now. Yeah, this is the kind of situation where I'll, I'll share with you guys, you know, at the very beginning when we were trying to figure out, you know, um, what's the largest gather size gatherings we want to allow. And nobody wanted to decide, you know, I'm looking at the health experts and the emergency management experts and, and, and nobody wants to be the one to say this is it because it's such an unprecedented time that um, nobody's been through this before. And so I very quickly, you know, uh, discovered that, that that's what folks have elected me to do is, is make those decisions. And so what I've been doing is, is taking the best information I can from the experts, asking them, you know, we work very closely with academics at Rice University, we work with the doctors at the medical center with our public health experts, and, and I ask them not just what are we doing in the rest of Texas or in other states and cities, but what are we doing in other countries? You know, I can tell you what they're doing or not doing in, in Singapore and New Zealand and South Korea and Taiwan and Iran, and you know, and so um, in that way, it is just a matter of having the information, um, making the decisions based on that science, that data, and, and, and recognizing that um, we have to be prepared for the worse. So ultimately, in that, in that, when that question came up, you know, what size gathering should we allow sort of back in the day, right as we were closing the rodeo, what I said was, look, if we, people are saying 10,000 and you no know, 5,000, 1,000, and, and I looked around in the country and the world and realized folks had started at 10,000 and then gone to five and then to 1,000 and 500 and then 250, like, okay, guys, how about we just go straight to 250? Because if we do the exact same thing, that every other uh, place has done, and they're in a bad situation. We're just going to end up where they are. So we got to we got to shortcut this a bit. Um, in terms of you know being able to to go home at night, and you know we're all in this. We're all dealing with this in some way, shape, or form. For me, it's it's exercise. I love to run. I love to be outdoors. So I try and squeeze that in. And but it, but truly, you know, one thing that is very grounding for me is just recognizing that this is a phenomenon that's not impacting just me and my family, my community, but the entire world, and that we all are getting through together and we all have a power to stop. We're, we're all going through uncharted waters right now, and uh, a lot of us are, are just finding new ways of doing things and really new ways of living online. Um, what drives and motivates you these days? I know uh, finding a solution for, for what we're in right now, but what drives or motivates you? You know, I, I ran for office to make a difference, right? To, to make a difference for the millions of people in Harris County. And there, I'd always been the person that wanted to try and beat the system into shape from the outside. I work as an advocate, you know, I was always an activist and um, you know, civil rights law type thing. I figured that was kind of where I was headed after graduate school. And I decided to take, uh, you know, to run for this position because I figured I could have more of an impact on the inside. And so what drives me is ensuring that I'm leveraging that position to make the best decisions that can possibly be made. So there's no room in my brain for politics or, you know, what might look better for me or whatever is uh, folks know not to not even bring that up, you know, because the minute they try to bring those considerations are just like, guys, there's no space in my head for that. 
Um, and, and I want to go back to my agenda. You know, we came in and there were so many opportunities to address needs in our county from um, transportation, right? So many folks haven't been able to get tested because they, there's no real, you know, public transportation system. So they don't have a car, they can't get to the site. Um, there's, of course, the, we were working on early childhood education. We know access to childcare is a big issue and it clearly is. Um, flood control always, we're working around the clock. That one hasn't stopped, but um, I, you know, I'm, I'm in a hurry to try and, and mitigate the impact of this. Uh, right now it's about containment, trying to see if, if we can work within the governor's timeline to contain the virus through an army of contact tracers and testing. And then after that, um, you know, hopefully get back to all of the things we were working on that we had such great opportunities to address. And, you know, we're, there's no rest for the weary because we're, we're heading through this crisis and we've got hurricane season right around the right around the corner for us. Yes. So hurricane season starts technically June 1st. But folks will remember last year in May, you know, was when we had the floods in Kingwood, which uh, flooded, uh, you know, too many homes. And it was just catastrophic for that area. So it's certainly the, the weather's not going to wait, uh, perhaps not till June. It's certainly not until the virus is over. So our flood control projects have been going full steam ahead. One of the things we did last year was enact the most stringent requirements for developers that we could under the law uh, that basically say that they can't build in a way that floods people downstream where there to be a heavy rain. So those are in Harris County outside the city of Houston. We don't have jurisdiction within the city, but um, you know, we're hoping they'll follow along in that too. And, um, and then right now we just, there are things people can do. We need folks to make sure they, they have flood insurance, you know, Folks, 60% of the homes that flooded during Imelda last fall were, were homes that did not have flood insurance. So those are folks that didn't think they were ever going to flood. But we live 50 feet above sea level, and there could be a giant, you know, uh, downpour of rain right over one area as it happened in May last year, as it happened during the Imelda floods. Um, you know, Memorial Day tax is kind of this very, very... Um, heavy concentrated rain and that could happen in a place where our drainage projects aren't done yet our flood control projects aren't done yet and we really need folks to, to try and have flood insurance I know some folks may not be able to afford it but if you have it make sure it's, it's it, you extend it if you can afford it you know the the folks who flood I just I remember it the both those floods last year the folks who did not have flood insurance even if we managed to get federal aid or, or aid that the county can provide it, it takes a while to to arrive and whereas the folks who do have flood insurance immediately they can they can be back on their feet and it's just it's a it's a really important thing that people need to do and uh, folks can go to readyharris.org for information how to prepare for hurricane season you know flood insurance how to get you know if you want to get tested you need to get tested for covid we have all kinds of resources on on readyharris.org that's really our, our one-stop shop judge lena hidalgo harris county judge thank you for being here this afternoon and joining us on the show we appreciate Appreciate the work you do, and our students and faculty are, are very appreciative that you join us. Thank you so much. And we will be back right after this. Meet Wally. He's a single dad. He's also a role model for his five-year-old son, going back to school with him. This time, Wally's going to Houston Community College for a second career. HCC, for everyone, anytime. In these times, we are all doing our share to battle the virus. We view an attack against any faith or any ethnic group as an attack against all of us. We're all in this together. Many of us are immigrants. The virus affects all nationalities. We work together. We're all in this together. We are all Texans. Meet Elizabeth. She's a mom on her way to get groceries. She's also on her way to getting an associate's degree at Houston Community College that could help provide for her family. HCC, for everyone, anytime. Welcome back to The Topic on HCC TV. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and all across social media through Houston Community College District. 
I'm Tom Duplantis. We're, we're, earlier, we had a chance to speak with Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo, who shared some thoughts and insight for us. And uh, she was really brought here by our next guest. And we've got Al Tareen here. He's an HCC student and also president of the Computer Science Association Club. And Samir Saber, who is the faculty division or division faculty chair for the uh, cybersecurity and computer networking program. Thanks for being here, everyone. Thanks, Todd. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Al, so you scored really big with getting uh, Judge Hidalgo on the show. We appreciate your efforts there. Um, listening to her interview what did you glean out of her interview or some takeaways you thought with that what i've learned from her interview is that she's the type of person that thinks long term plan plans long term and has the best interest in at, at you know at her heart and one of the things that really struck with me is when she said that regarding the problem that we're facing with covid students are the real innovators in this yeah. Students are at the front end with technology and innovation and with programs at Houston Community College offered by the DIT and the Center of Excellence, we can truly utilize such technologies to, to map uh, data, to create solutions, to project uh, you know, how this disease will spread or or what measures have we taken and what's the outcome of that measure, if it's a negative outcome or a positive outcome. So I believe that even though students may feel as if they don't have a real impact or a say in this situation, they truly do have the skills at their uh, disposal to truly make an impact. Samir, you know, students are really innovators. I know when we need to learn something new at HCC TV, we bring in a couple of our students and uh, run the idea by them and they'll give us some new ideas. And I guess we're all learning from our students. Every day, you know, and, and that's what makes the Computer Science Association amazing. It's, it's not just coders and programmers that come in. It's really all walks of life. You got engineers, cybersecurity students. And, and like Al said, it's... Um, they're all eager and hungry to make a change, you know, and, and going back to what Judge Hidalgo said, you know, her background is very similar. She came from outside as kind of an activist. And I, I like that she mentioned that um, she, she really takes this to heart, the session that we had, because you can tell that uh, she, she's genuine and she's trying to make changes from inside. And, and, and like you said, Todd, this is, her role has to be one of the most difficult ones because there's so many, um, you know, different things. And I'll, and I'll just say, I, I like that she's, she's, she's tech savvy per se. She understands that the next generation is going to be kind of like tech savvy. Um, you know, the new generation will get us there. Al, why is it important to uh, bring public figures in to uh, speak to your club? And what did, you had some things planned in person with uh, like Judge Hidalgo and others, didn't you? Yes, yeah, so approximately five months ago, I, I did reach out to Judge Hidalgo to come speak to SHEP, which is another organization at Houston Community College. At that time, her assistant said she was busy. However, she did say to feel free to reach out to her at another time. So um, with, all, with the school closure and having all our events canceled, Samir, I, and, and our executive board, uh, with the help of Dominique Brown, uh, the student life coordinator at HCC Northwest, we've determined to create a virtual program to offer the maximized benefits to our students. And what we've you know, learned by implementing this is that there's truly a lot of insight that students can gain from these powerful speakers and a lot of our members are empowered from the, this and and as you might know Todd being a public speaker there, th th these types of conversations truly make an impact on students lives and I'm just very grateful for your help as well in you know, making all this possible in such a short period of time. So thank you as well. Absolutely. You know, it's a pleasure. Uh, we, we've, uh, we've reached out to your office in the past too about getting her on the show to uh, update us throughout this crisis because we do live broadcasts every day on uh, the uh, Houston Community College District Facebook page. And uh, we do bring public figures on there from time to time just to kind of update us. And one thing I've learned from working remotely 
is you may think you're limited, but quite honestly, now that I'm outside of the office, our reach has really broadened for HCC TV. And I'm wondering if you guys have noticed that as well, because we're learning how to do things a new way and more people seem to be watching. You know, before I get to that, I, I feel like those sessions, we were at a time before we started doing those sessions where you could tell the club, you know, the chat rooms and things were very quiet. You kind of had that ear feeling. Everybody was just really stressed. We didn't know what was going yeah. on. And then, and then once we started doing these sessions, you could see everyone's kind of opening up again and, and realizing, Hey, it's okay. Um, we have these mentors. We had some really nice intimate sessions with some of these guest speakers to kind of, Tell the students it's okay. Don't be lonely. Um, this is how you can motivate yourself, get organized, and whatnot. And and um, yeah. And so the continuity of all that. Um, you know, we want to do more of that, Todd. By the way, and I know this is something we haven't discussed, but we really we feel like we want to do more of these kind of like virtual, whatever you, coffee hour, happy hour, whatever you want to call it, where it's you know the students get together we we do these kinds of sessions and then also having guest speakers al have you seen uh, more creativity from your your fellow colleagues out there and uh, have you felt more creativity being that you've had to think outside the box now to learn and also to deliver things in regards to creativity what i've noticed is that there's some people some students who are just not up to tune with technology so they're struggling heavily and they they, they haven't built the skills to collaborate through a digital mean and to just, you know, build, have the discipline to sit down at a desk. And then I also met some people who've just taken it to a next level and were excelling through remote collaboration and such. And uh, we had a speaker um, uh, recently who spoke on the concept of design thinking and the concept of just setting up your environment and the, you know and how important objects are in your environment such as a pen or and and how objects can be negative or positive and she gave excellent tips to our students it was very intimate on just maximizing productivity in your environment whether that's from family you might have you know you might be living with a lot of family members that might be disturbing you or noises or it might be you don't have a office you don't have a desk so she she just came uh, our speaker came in and it was a one-on-one -on -one interaction with with our members and it was very intimate and provided a lot of valuable tips on uh just creating that positive environment for for students Al Tareen, you are the uh, president of the HCC Computer Science Club and also an HCC student. And we also have Samir Saber, the HCC faculty advisor and division chair of computer networking. I want to thank both of you for being here today on the topic. And, uh, you know, Al, once again, great get with uh, helping us get uh, Judge Lena Hidalgo on as a special guest for the show. Anytime. Thank you so much. Absolutely. And Samir, thank you as well. And uh, we hope to do more of these with you, uh, with you guys. We're, we're here to uh, work uh, with our students and our faculty to make sure your voices are getting out there and to offer another platform for broadcasting, live streaming. That's what we here are here for, for at HCC TV. So make sure you reach out to us anytime. And thank you for joining me today on the topic. I'm Todd Duplantis. Make sure you uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Find us on Facebook, follow us as well, and you can download all audio podcasts of our shows on Apple Podcasts or at hccs.edu slash podcasts. For the topic on HCC TV, I'm Todd Duplantis. I'll see you next time.